The Justice Department has released new information to justify the FBI raid on Trump. Will they actually prosecute the former president? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. It's time to talk about President Trump again. Last time it was because the search warrant for Trump's Mar-a-Lago home was released. Now the search warrant affidavit has been revealed. Heavily redacted, of course. But no matter how long it's been since Trump left office, everyone wants to make sure that he's not redacted from your life. I mean, how else are the media going to get their ratings back? The post-Trump news slump was so bad that even the Washington Post had to admit that Trump wasn't wrong about that. Of course, the Washington Post will never admit that Trump was actually right about anything. Because if they did, the paper would spontaneously combust. Speaking of explosive revelations, yesterday the DOJ revealed another court filing with the most details we've gotten so far on why they searched Mar-a-Lago. Just before we recorded this episode, which meant we had to frantically rewrite half of it. Thanks, DOJ. That document was in response to Trump asking a court to appoint a special master in the investigation. A special master is a third-party neutral lawyer that would oversee the DOJ's review of the documents taken from Mar-a-Lago and filter out anything that would be privileged. The DOJ argues that appointing a special master would hurt national security. And that anyway, they've already reviewed the documents. The DOJ also claims they filtered out any documents that would be covered by attorney-client privilege. But that's not the explosive part of this filing. That would be the claim that documents may have been moved or hidden even as the U.S. government was asking Trump for them. We already knew some of this from the warrant and the affidavit. According to the warrant, the FBI was allowed to seize evidence of three crimes. Violation of the Espionage Act, the concealment, removal, or mutilation of government records, and the obstruction of investigations by altering or destroying evidence. But there were a lot of details left out in the warrant, such as what exactly the FBI found. But in a highly unusual move, a magistrate judge ordered the Justice Department to make the Mar-a-Lago affidavit public. An affidavit is a document that attempts to prove a warrant is necessary, and that a search will be useful. In this case, the affidavit led to the warrant that led to the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago. As they say, one thing leads to another. Affidavits typically remain under seal until charges are filed, but at the judge's order, the Justice Department made a redacted version of the Mar-a-Lago affidavit public. A very redacted version. The DOJ said this was necessary to protect the safety and privacy of witnesses and the integrity of the investigation. Now, as of this recording, the media is just speculating on what's redacted. But we were able to learn a little bit more thanks to it. For example, remember those 15 boxes of documents Trump initially sent to the National Archives and Records Administration back in January? According to the affidavit, those boxes contained 184 total classified documents, 67 documents marked as confidential, 92 documents marked as secret, and 25 documents marked as top secret. These were marked with uh, a bunch of acronyms. Now, those acronyms don't really mean much to us ordinary folk, but in the classified world, they seem to mean a lot. According to journalist Fred Kaplan, in my experience, back when I was a congressional aide with a top secret clearance, most documents marked confidential and secret are not very sensitive. With top secret documents, one begins to enter the realm of classified. Once you get into um, all these acronyms, you get into really, really classified. So that tells us a little more about what exactly Trump had stashed away. Kind of. We found out more with the most recent filing from the DOJ, which I'll tell you about right after the break. Welcome back. The DOJ just released a new document arguing against appointing a special master to the FBI investigation. In it, they also give the most information we've gotten so far about why the FBI searched Mar-a-Lago. Here's the timeline of what the DOJ says happened. Starting in 2021, the National Archives and Records Administration, the NARA, 
was communicating with President Trump's team, looking for documents they thought he had taken when he left office. Trump cooperated, and NARA retrieved 15 boxes of documents from Trump's home in January 2022. According to the DOJ, Trump didn't say at the time that these documents were subject to executive privilege or declassified. After finding some classified documents in the boxes, NARA informed the DOJ and eventually handed the boxes over to the FBI to review. That's when the FBI found the 184 classified documents we mentioned earlier. The document then says that through its investigation, the FBI developed evidence that there were still more boxes of documents at Mar-a-Lago that could contain classified information. So they issued a subpoena to Trump's lawyers for any classified documents still at Mar-a-Lago. In June, Trump's team turned over 38 more classified documents, along with a letter that certified that a diligent search had been done, and these were all the remaining classified documents. The DOJ then said that the FBI found multiple sources of evidence that there were still classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. And not just that. The government also developed evidence that government records were likely concealed and removed from the storage room, and that efforts were likely taken to obstruct the government's investigation. That's when the DOJ applied for the search warrant. During the raid, the FBI confiscated 13 more boxes that did contain classified material, including more than 100 documents with classification markings. They included a photo of some of the documents, which they described as a redacted photo of some of the classified documents recovered from a container in Trump's office. Trump was not happy about the photo. He claimed, sorry, he truthed, that the FBI threw the papers all over the floor to make him look bad. He also said that he had already declassified the documents, which I'll talk about in a minute. But first, the DOJ claimed that since they were able to find twice the number of classified documents that the Trump team had previously handed over, casts doubt on Trump's cooperation with their investigation. The rest of the document was the DOJ's argument for why the court should not approve a special master in this case. I'm not going to go into all of the details here. Remember, everything in this document is from the DOJ and the FBI's perspective. Trump can file a response to this, which he hasn't as of this recording. By the time you're watching this, the court may have already made a decision on the special master. This is why we don't cover breaking news. Anyway, Trump insists that he declassified all the material that the FBI seized. Specifically, that he had a standing order that anything he took to Mar-a-Lago was declassified. It's hard to say how valid that is, since there is disagreement over how exactly documents get declassified. The president has broad powers to declassify documents. Some say there's a specific process involved. But the details of the process and who determines the process are a little cloudy. Even Politico says that Trump's declassification claim might not be that outlandish, which is kind of like the Washington Post saying that Trump wasn't wrong. Actually proving that Trump committed some kind of crime related to having these classified or declassified documents would be tough. Which brings us to the big question. Will the Justice Department prosecute Trump? More after the break. Welcome back. The FBI got a lot of classified documents from Trump after their raid on Mar-a-Lago. So they should have a strong case that Trump committed crimes justifying charges, right? Well, Trump hasn't been arrested so far, so what does this mean? No one really knows for sure, but a lot of people have opinions. Some, like the former assistant director of intelligence for the FBI, Kevin Brock, say the unsealed Mar-a-Lago search warrant affidavit reveals the government has no case against Trump. After all, Trump, as president, could possess and declassify documents. But that's not really the issue. According to Brock, the unredacted parts of the affidavit make no attempt to articulate cause that Trump was not authorized to have these documents in his home. And according to one attorney, the alleged crimes in the warrant have nothing to do with whether the documents were classified, except tangentially. So in some ways, the classification of the documents is kind of a red herring. It's important politically because it makes Trump look bad. But it might be hard to prove he actually mishandled classified documents. But the DOJ could charge Trump with unlawfully retaining government records. And then there's the issue of obstruction of justice. 
which this latest filing makes clear that the DOJ thinks likely happened. Of course, it's not clear whether the DOJ thinks Trump himself was obstructing justice or just Trump's team. But will the DOJ actually indict Trump? It would be the first criminal case ever brought against a former president. And it's going to be hard to do. Which is why some people think the DOJ won't do it. According to former assistant U.S. attorney Andrew McCarthy, it's possible the Justice Department's objective has never been to build a criminal case against Trump. It makes little sense that Justice Department officials would be fighting so hard against revealing the sensitive information in the affidavit if they intended to prosecute. If the department indicted Trump, the affidavit would be disclosed to the defense and become public in short order. Keeping the affidavit largely redacted makes perfect sense if the Justice Department does not plan to indict the former president. But why all this fuss if the Justice Department doesn't plan to charge Trump? By not prosecuting Trump, the government could get top secret information back without needing to reveal U.S. intelligence capabilities. And, of course, as far as politicians and the media are concerned, a Trump scandal is always gold for any side. Those on the left can attempt to discredit Trump by saying that he'll be indicted, while those on the right can claim that the FBI is targeting Trump politically. Everybody wins! <sighs> so what do you think? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, remember we rely mainly on direct viewer support from viewers like you. You can either support us on patreon.com slash America Uncovered, or on our exclusive social media community on Locals at americauncovered.locals Com. Become a supporter and help us keep making great episodes. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.